Hello everybody, I'm glad you're here today. Today is June 20th, 2024. I'm going to bring you everything dreams in this video. That is going to be what we're going to concentrate on the most. We have had, and these are dreams I've already brought to you, but I still want to bring some things up and talk about them anyway. I cannot tell you the original posting of these dreams because I'm not that organized. So I'm sorry, I can't give you the date and you can kind of guess and maybe go through. I'm going to read the dreams to you anyway. So it, it's it's all cool. It's all going to be great. Uh, so there's that. I want to bring you this one tip. A prepper's thought. I know, look. I know we all have our own little library of books that just in case we go offline, grid down, whatever, we have stuff, a hard copy of information to go to. Here is one book that I got a while back. It's Nuclear War Survival Skills. Y'all, it's tedious. Look, I only got like that far, you know, not far. It's kind of more one of those reference books where you thumb through and kind of, but I mean, y'all, it is like small print and a lot of information, a lot. Expedient shelter furnishings. That's chapter 14. All right. Uh, now it is dated clearly. These pictures are from the 70s, all right? But, uh, and there's a there's a, a story about the person who put all this together and who he is and how he functions in this circle. But, um, yeah, if you don't have this book, you may want to get it. Um, that's just my two cents worth today. You can take that, put a dime with it, and buy, we well, used to buy a cup of coffee, but you can't even do that anymore. Yeah. Take that, put a put about twenty dollars with it, and you can buy a cup of coffee. That's how that's where we're at today. All right, y'all. I am going to do this first. This dream is what I'm going to talk about. Now listen. Uh, I don't know, y'all. I I I have other prepper things I want to bring to you that are just sitting over here on the table saw <laughs> that we store in the pantry. It's right here, but I don't know if I'll get to those today. Um. But what I do want to bring you is it is actually a dream interpretation that somebody put in the comment section yesterday. And I appreciate it so much because I really think it's spot on and informative to one of the dreams that I had. And I hate to belabor this. Please forgive me and don't roll your eyes. And you may have to roll your eyes. You have every right to do that. But I, it is the mash dream that I had. Now... I'm going to just, that dream, I have it right here. I wrote it down. It's April, uh, April 14th, 2023. A little over a year ago, I had this dream. I was in the show MASH, but I wasn't in it. I was just looking kind of down at it, at the mess hall of MASH 4077. Remember that show? And um, it was in the mess tent and Radar was leaving the tent, and he was in the doorway. He was walking out the doorway, and he turned, and Hawkeye was sitting a little ways back facing the doorway, just sitting by himself in a chair. And when Radar turned around, Hawkeye saluted him in kind of a funny way and said, Iroki, which I had, and that, that was it. And then I woke up. I... When I thought, what was that word? Y'all, you know it. I've told it on the video before on this channel before. Iroki. I was like, I don't even know that word. What is that? Anyway, it is Korean for in this way or this way or like this. So um, now then, that little blip of a dream has a ton of symbolism, a ton of parallels, uh, a whole bunch of just balancing this is what this could mean this is what this can mean all right and that's why i'm bringing it to you again today sorry i talked about it yesterday i, I hope that's not uh, tedious for you but here is one of the best interpretations for that dream that i want to bring to you i want to read this to you you the viewers Y'all, we are the body of Christ, all right? And even though we've never met in person, we write to each other 
like pen pals. Remember when we used to do pen pals, y'all? Um, oh, okay, I'm not going to go down that story. But uh, so we do that in the comment section. That's why the comment section is is crucial. That's your playing field, y'all. My playing field is this video. But y'all have the power in the comment section. And that's why we need to hear your voice. What are your dreams? If you give a dream and you write it in the comment section, I do, I'm not gifted in interpretation. So I'm just shooting straight with you on that right there. That's why we need each other. Because there are people who are gifted in interpretation. And that's how we roll. Now, here is what this person's interpretation is of the MASH 4077 dream. And this person says, I almost wait, I wanted to email you because of the seriousness of this interpretation. Other people, uh, not you. Okay, so um, I, I don't know exactly what they mean, but maybe they shared that with other people and they were like, wow, this is really serious. Yo, I don't know the seriousness of things, all right? Okay, I, I, I'll explain all that. Let's just keep going with this, all right? So here is what this person says. The core of the dream was the Korean word and the different salute. A salute is military. You salute to show respect, and it is required if a lower-ranking officer is near a higher-ranking officer. I believe God is saying we will have to show submission and respect to a foreign military. They go on to say, I believe your dream is showing us that as part of God's just judgment, we will, number one, be invaded, number two, be put into captivity by foreign army or military, which is how God judged Israel in both the Old and New Testament. We will have to give our salute, respect, submission to them. Even though there were they are they were two Americans, the only word spoken was Korean in the dream. Also, Hawkeye, one that sees far, was positioned directly facing the door. The Lord is wanting us to prepare to face the coming days head on. One more thing. Radar was famous for he had contacts known only to him, and he got critically needed supplies when they ran out. God is preparing us to position ourselves directly facing the door in order to see in the distance, hear in the distance, and prepare to be uh, submitting to foreign armies, all for the sake of of the prodigals coming home to the Father. God will readily help us. He will give us the vision, Hawkeye. He will give us the supernatural hearing, Radar. And he will give us the provisions along the way. The mess tent is where they ate their meals, where they got their needed strength through food, Though it was not tasty or what they wanted, it was also the place of fellowship to withstand the assignment. Lastly, his name was Pierce, Benjamin Franklin Pierce. He was a surgeon and had to pierce men's skin in order to save other lives. God is going to pierce the hearts of, our, of the prodigals to bring them home. God is going to pierce the hearts of the prodigals to bring them home. He is also going to pierce the hearts of the lazy, stubborn, spoiled church to get the bride ready to be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And then the, the rest is personal. Okay, so if you want to reread that, it's, it's it, unless they delete it, I'm not going to delete it. It's on the comment section of June 19th, 2024. That's the where that comment is. All right, I that that they they run circles around me as far as being able to to interpret in an organized way that makes sense. And they saw all the metaphors in that in that little blip of a dream. 
and I believe that resonates with the spirit within me. All right. So I find that exciting, this interpretation. I find it exciting. I find it daunting. I'm a little unsettled by it, but I've always been. I mean, I've been living with this dream, so it's not new to me. So I found that fascinating. Thank you, viewer. And any of the rest of you, please chirp in. I, I do read them. I may not comment or may not be able to get to them. Uh, or even if you email me, I suck at responding. I really do. I'm so sorry. It's just because my eye, well, I'm not going to give you any, any excuse. I'm really bad at it. So, all right, here's the next thing I want to bring to you. The second dream that we're going to talk about in this video. This dream was one that my daughter had on May 1st, 2024. I have brought you this dream before. She has dreamt another dream since this one that I have not made a video of. And there are reasons for that I'm not going to get into in this one. Trust me. Okay, I, I'm going to bring it to you soon. Just trust me. Okay, there's some stuff that needs to settle in it. Okay, so I know you'll understand. But this dream, the one that she had on May 1st, 2024... I am sincerely asking you and humbly asking you, ha after I read this to you, here's my question. Has this been affirmed? Has this been confirmed by the news in the last 24 hours? And when I ask that, this dream, report, uh, and I'll, I'll read it to you in a minute, but this dream that she had states that Cyprus has been attacked by an EMP. That's what this dream says. Y'all, Cyprus isn't even on my radar, all right? No, there we go, back to that. Cyprus isn't, like, it's not even a, a major player in my mind. Cyprus, I haven't even said the word Cyprus, like, since I was probably in fourth grade when we were going through the book of Acts, all right? So I'm just saying, this dream that she had talks about Cyprus being attacked. And when she had it, we thought, what does that mean? That makes no sense. We talked about the book of Acts and Paul's, what happened to Paul in Cyprus, which is worth noting. But as of the last 24 hours, this was written and updated today on June 20th, 2024. This is USA Today stating that I mean here I'll let you look at the I'll let you look at the headline. There it is. There's the headline. And it says head of Lebanon's Hezbollah threatens Israel and Cyprus. What did you say? I mean I that's where I was yesterday when I heard this. NY Prepper came out with it yesterday and I didn't have time to kind of dig um there were lots of things. My daughter got home from her Mission trip, just fine. So she's back in the country, back under our roof. So that's good. But when I heard this, I looked today. Okay, so this is today's. And this is the first paragraph. The head of Lebanon's Hezbollah said on Wednesday that nowhere in Israel would be safe if a full-fledged war breaks out between the two foes and also threatened EU member Cyprus for the first time and other parts of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Okay. So then, y'all, I'm not even going to read this whole article, but it goes on to say, Nezrelah also threatened, this is the guy, the Lebanon head guy, uh, he also threatened Cyprus, the EU member state in closest proximity to Lebanon, with which it had a cordial relations, accusing it of allowing Israel to use its airport bases for military exercises. Now, Cyprus responds, blah, 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 blah. All of that's political. You can dig through that and find that. But I'm just showing you that. This happened. It's in the news. It's in the headlines. Cyprus is in the headlines being threatened by an attack from Lebanon. All right. So here's this dream that my daughter, 29, believer in Jesus Christ, she's an Aryan. So this is what, uh, what she wrote. I woke up. Okay. I'll, I'll go from her perspective. I'm sorry. She's the one who writes these. And so she writes them from her perspective. May 1st, 2024. This is what Taylor wrote. 
she woke up from this dream shaking. She was shaking. She dreamt it was Thanksgiving. She was in the van with her gran and papa and BL and teen. And they were, these, those are family friends. Gran and Papa are her grandparents. We were going to Walmart. I needed to go to the bathroom. We stopped and I went to the right looking for a bathroom. Gran went left. I walked through this area with an ice cream counter and they were selling Girl Scout cookie ice cream. There were all these Girl Scouts. Um, a dad asked this lady if she wanted samples. She said no. So he asked me. I said sure. He gave me... Um, a very, a very small cup of ice cream. One was blue and one was red. They were barely enough even to taste. I continued looking for the bathroom, but they were all full of reserve or reserved for the Girl Scouts. Finally, I found one. I then had two shopping bags in my hands. The bathroom was both inside and kind of outside windows. Uh, and they were big. The The window was very big. And it was all around the bathroom. So it felt like I was like outside. Uh, or she felt like she was outside. As she was going, she looked up and saw this huge purple and yellow explosion. Just in the sky. Kind of a swirl. And she heard the words, Terminal Velocity. She thought it was an EMP, and that was it. Uh, she finished going to the bathroom and left the stall with her bags in hand, and uh, she was excited. Uh, she uh, No, she exited the stall and realized that, uh, uh, that she had seen, it was like a movie trailer for a movie called Terminal Velocity. That's what it had felt like. It felt like a movie trailer that she had seen called Terminal Velocity. She went back out through the ice cream place and was standing in front of Covenant Hospital. And I was standing there in uh, my purple jacket that I like. And uh, there are like cartoon aliens from Area 51 on the back of it. Uh, but uh, there, but that was not on there at that time. It was just a plain purple jacket with no design. And uh, I asked her how she had gotten there. And she, uh, Taylor asked me how I had gotten there and said, and I told her, Cyprus has been hit with an EMP. It doesn't exist anymore. So we were at Covenant Hospital. I was standing there in a purple jacket. And she, uh, I asked her, or she asked me how I had gotten there. And I just, I didn't even tell her. I just said, Cyprus has been hit with an ENP. It doesn't exist anymore. There it is. I mean, I don't know if y'all can see that or not. It was right up here. And what what she thought of was Acts 13, 5 through 18, Paul's, one of his missionary journeys where he was in Cyprus. But the, she didn't know that's just what, she, that's us, that's all we know about Cyprus. The Apostle Paul went there. Then she heard the words again, terminal velocity. Everything started shaking, and we realized we were under attack, but we didn't see anything. And I told her, I said, they are going, they are going to give us five messages indicating the sky riding, like it was going to be in the sky. As we were waiting for the first message, someone told us to get in the shelter under the hospital. Mike, my husband, her father was not with us, and it made her worried. We couldn't call and warn him, but I told her he would figure it out. So we all started going down into the shelter. People were panicking. She was the last one of the family to get in, and as she walked in, to her right, there were three baskets. The first had keys in it, like hotel, old hotel keys uh, that uh, that had, like, room numbers on it. Uh, I, she thought it might be for a room, 
she specifically thought hotel key. Then there were candles in a basket, and she thought we would need these. Then there were a few cell phones, and so she grabbed one, thinking it might come in useful. She took uh, one of the last ones, and this guy challenged her, but she just shrugged. And uh, so, and took one, and and she had one of each of those. Uh, she thought it was crazy that no one else or very few people were grabbing the stuff that was right there in front of them while they could. She figured they were in such a panic they didn't even notice. Uh, so she sat down in like a, a chair and... Um, but then we all had to move a little bit and she kept getting separated from the family or from me. And finally... Uh, we settled, and there were like half globes on the ceiling, like security globes, you know what I'm talking about, uh, that security cameras are in. And uh, she was still waiting for this. We were all still waiting for the sky riding, and she thought about the staff and the patients upstairs in the hospital and how scared they were and wondered how they would find shelter. Then everything started shaking, and images of the doctors and nurses getting under cots flashed through her mind. Uh, it was shaking so much, she thought, I wonder if we'll survive this. Then she woke up, still shaking, and prayed for clarification and heard, it's coming. She prayed that if it was from the Lord, she'd remember it in the morning, and she did. All right. So, my point is, y'all, my question is, because of what has happened in the last 24 hours, we have not seen Cyprus attacked yet, but there is a threat. It's on the table. Is, is this dream? Is, is, is that affirmation? Is that what it looks like when a dream is affirmed? I'm leaning towards yes, and I wish I were more confident in this because, y'all, I, I have not been raised... My church background is not this. Um, my church background is all of this stopped with the last apostle who died. I don't believe that anymore. I, and I don't believe it in any way, shape, or form anymore. So that's what happened to me in my mid-50s. I'm 58 now. Well, early 50s. So I'm new at this kind of walk with Christ. So I need you to teach me. I mean, I've kind of been on a crash course with God, that's for sure. He's teaching me. But is that legit? Does that does that validify that dream? One person mentioned that that trailer, movie trailer, uh, which I find this to be a fascinating interpretation when she mentions terminal velocity being like a movie trailer. That's a movie trailer tells us what's coming coming soon you know when you go to the movies and they show you all those trailers it says they're coming soon to a theater near you coming soon to a war theater near you is that what that means i th i say yes i'm gonna leave that with y'all i hope you can glean information i hope we can help each other write your dreams below don't be afraid write who you need us to pray for if you have people in the military oh my word yes we will pray we will pray whatever you need how can i serve you how can this community serve you that's all i have stay safe america this is gina lima charlie i'm out